I've already made one video about GoPros and how you need to live a certain type of lifestyle in order to get footage that really complements the camera, to live the GoPro life. So instead of complaining about it and focusing on things like audio, which GoPro users really don't care about, I try to live a little more exciting. I've gone to a few more locations that will provide a little more GoPro-worthy footage and lived out of a van for a week. Is the GoPro camera that good or is your life that boring? I try to make that a lot more intense than it actually was. Don't get me wrong, I pushed it this whole trip. But when I look at these clips and compare them to the GoPro launch video, I think you could have pushed yourself farther. And that's definitely what GoPro wants me to think. It's part of the brand to make it motivational to have a GoPro, as if the camera unlocks your ability to have more adventures. Operating any camera in a high intensity environment is stressful enough. Changing lenses on top of Angel's Landing, flying a drone while in a moving van, none of that ever feels great. But do it with a lot of focus and care, that's all you can do. When it comes to using a touchscreen in these settings, whether it's due to cold hands like mine or a shaky environment, swiping through submenus is the last thing you wanna do with one hand on a chain off the side of a cliff. I prepped my custom settings in the van well in advance, so at most, all I was doing was swiping twice. If you're a GoPro user, I really advise doing this so you can be more in the moment when it happens. Have 5K, 4K Super View, and 1080 to 40 FPS ready to go. The 5K footage out of this thing is great. It's really nice to have the extra resolution, but I find myself using 4K Super View more because I prefer that field of view. I used just two mounts this whole trip, a magnetic clip and a magic arm on a clamp. Versatile, cheap, really easy to change, fast. It's still a small camera, so it's still a small sensor. Don't expect any crazy changes for your nighttime underlit footage. Notice I didn't say low light, I said underlit. These larger batteries are pretty solid on runtime. I never needed more than the two I had on hand, but the 5K does make for pretty large file sizes, so have a backup solution in mind. I went without a computer for my trip and used a remote backup system, which plenty of companies make now and the media mod, which stayed on almost the whole trip, yet I rarely talked to camera. So why leave it on? Why make it bigger? Charging. It's faster for me to just open the flap and charge the camera that way, versus taking off the door and plugging in the cable. Most of the time I was charging things on the go from a big USB power bank, easier than opening the side door. Using the GoPro Hero 9 and action settings just made sense. To take it on hikes and all-terrain drives, I feel like I was finally using a GoPro the way you're supposed to use a GoPro. I've owned every previous version of this camera, but I never felt like I was taking advantage of all it could, you know, survive. This is probably the last episode or one of the last episodes in the Desert series. If you haven't checked out the previous episodes, look at the playlist I've put in the description below. And please subscribe. It's really all I want for Christmas. Until next time, I'm off walking.